Listen up, people. That's right. It's time to listen to the sparks of bliss in your life. I'm your host and life coach, Caroline De Posada from Miami, Florida. And this podcast is an invitation to join me in upgrading our mindset, wellness, and relationships so that together we create a life that unlocks our bliss. Join me each week as we explore practical strategies, inspiring stories, and the moments of clarity, or as we like to call them, los momenticos, that make the world a little more magical. Consider this your weekly dose of wisdom in your pocket. Are you ready? Let's do this. Hi, everybody. Welcome to episode number nine of Blissen Up. Uh, Today, I am experimenting with what I like to call habit stacking. Uh, You know, there's a concept that I learned in Atomic Habits by James Clear, where you get a habit, right, and you master that habit, and then you stack on top of that habit with other habits, uh, almost as a natural consequence. So like, let's say, for example, that you are, you, you already brush your teeth. That's like a habit that you already have, and you need to work on your balance. One way to work on your balance is by, as you're brushing your teeth, brushing your teeth on one leg, right? Like balancing on <laughs> on one leg while you're brushing your teeth. And then the next day you balance on the other leg while you're brushing your teeth. So you're stacking onto something that you're already doing. Uh, I am trying that today in the podcast world. And what I mean by that is a podcast is a um, audio only platform. So all I have to do is sit in front of a microphone and speak into the speak into the microphone and I record my podcast. Well, ever since I began doing this, people have been asking me if I am going to also video record the podcast because I could put the clips on Instagram. I could put the clips on YouTube. I could, you know, I could do it as a YouTube episode and a podcast episode, right? Um, And it seems easy enough. Like if I'm already sitting in front of the camera, in front of the uh, microphone, then I should just have the camera on. But it's not as easy as it seems because sometimes I record the podcast and I'm not camera ready. I don't have my makeup on or my hair isn't done or um, it's I don't have good lighting that day or, you know, I, I just want to be in my pajamas. I don't know. Um, so it, it hasn't been that easy for me. Uh, and today was like proof of it. I was supposed to record my podcast, I don't know, an hour ago. And I've spent the last hour trying to figure out like, what background am I going to use? Um, you know, do I look good? Like, do I have good lighting? Like, do I need to put on some makeup? It turns out I do not have enough makeup for this, this, this run. Um, I think my face looks pretty pale in front of the camera, but guess what? I'm focusing on progress, not perfection. And I am moving on and I am recording and videotaping at the same time. It's taken me nine episodes to get here. And here we are. I am doing the best I can to stack onto this habit. Uh, And then eventually, I guess I'll master that. And then it won't be hard anymore. But for right now, it's a little hard. And we are doing hard, hard things. Um, So today's episode is a a fun, I I think it's going to be a fun episode because uh, we are starting the a fresh new month. We are stepping into July, and today is the last Sunday of June. So we are wrapping up a month, and we are stepping into a new month. And with that comes intention. It comes some uh, setting of themes. It comes some reflection on what the last month has looked like, and some foreshadowing on what we want the upcoming month to look like. Um, and always, I love to do it in the context of the year, right? Like, what are you doing in the year that, that uh, the overall theme of the year? So my, my word of the year is listen. And this year, I am tapping into that, to that listening uh, skill. I've had to listen to my intuition. I've had to listen to the signs that I've received, to the synchronicities, to the, uh, you know, paying attention to the things that have come up in my life. I'm currently listening a lot um, 
to doctors and to specialists regarding my sister's situation. Um, I, I haven't shared this on the podcast yet. I, I almost shared it on last week's episode, but I didn't because I really wanted to have her permission before I um, I shared. You know, I when when my father was diagnosed with cancer, one of the things that he told me was that this was not something that I was that he wanted me to share in public. And the reason for that was his job was to be a public figure, a a motivational speaker. And part of the job description is that they need to be able to rely on you a year in advance to be available for a speaking commitment. And my father always had like an underlying fear that if people knew that he was battling cancer, that he wouldn't be able to get business at the time because people wouldn't know if he was reliable, if he was going to be available a year out. So he always thought it was going to affect his business and it was something he wanted to keep very private. And as a result of that request that he made, I learned the importance of not sharing what is not yours to share. And for many, many, many years, I withheld that information and I kept it tight to my chest and I didn't um, tell anybody what I was going through and I kind of had to go through that process with him just just the two of us and there were some uh, benefits and blessings that came as a result of that privacy and then some of some of it I feel uh, was our, to our detriment because we really really couldn't um, reach out to a lot of people for support and um a lot of people, when he passed, were hurt because they didn't know what he was going through. So, so there was issues uh, with that. But you know, with everything in life that you do, there's good and there's bad, and um, there's pros and cons. And that was and that was his particular journey. So, I learned I learned the the value of being a what I like to call vault, and that that skill set of really protecting people's privacy has served me well, especially in the job that I do as a life coach. I am exposed to so much private information, so many things that people tell me um, that they confide in me. And as a friend, as a coach, as a parent, as a wife, as as a human, I've become someone that that knows how to keep people's information private and not share what is not mine to share and 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 it's one of the things I'm most proud of is that you know if you tell me something that it it will it will go to the grave with me unless um unless you give me permission to share otherwise so um, and, and that's why, by the way, oftentimes I change people's names when I share stories and I change circumstances, um, some of the facts so that, so that I always maintain the integrity of, um, of the person's privacy when I am sharing a, a story about a client or, or a family member or something like that. All that to say that uh, I didn't want to share my sister's story last week because even though it was her birthday last Sunday and I wanted desperately to wish her a happy birthday on the podcast and also share with you what she was going through um, in hopes that you could send her some good energy and keep her in your thoughts and, and also learn from her experience, but I her privacy was more important to me than that. But I did ask her, I did ask her if she minded if I shared a little bit of her story and she said no, that, that she didn't mind. And the reason she didn't mind, and I thought this was very special, was because she said, I, I would love for my story to serve someone and to help someone avoid going through what I've gone through. You know, my sister is a beautiful soul and she's going through a lot of pain right now. And she said to me, I, I don't wish this upon my worst enemy. I don't want anyone to ever... Um, she said, and she actually said, she says, I have no enemies, but even if I did, I would never wish this upon them because I wouldn't want anybody to suffer the way that I have or experience the pain that I've been experiencing, um, recently. So I am going to share a little bit of her story with you in hopes that it serves you in some way, um, so that I can honor that wish that she has that her story matters and impacts someone else's life and helps them 
uh, live better and feel better and do better and avoid a painful uh, journey if if she has anything to do with it. Uh, I don't know if you can hear the rain outside, but it started raining and uh, it's making some noise. So I don't know if you can hear it, but we'll see. Uh, so anyway, uh, my sister had a, a toe infection that hasn't healed. She she struggles with obesity and, and she's diabetic. And it's very common that when you have an infection, a, a diabetic patient uh, struggles with the healing process. That's one of the things that diabetes does it, is that it doesn't allow you to heal very well. So in her case, her toe wasn't healing and ended up requiring hospitalization twice um, if you follow my emails, I did share a little bit more about this on email and that resulted in last week, her having three surgeries, four surgeries, four surgeries. Wow. Um, four surgeries and a lot of, a very scary time. We were very scared, uh, that there was an, an impending amputation or something much more serious. And, um, luckily, for her and for our, for us, she's been able to avoid that. We've been able to save her toe, uh, but she is still in a lot of pain. So the the we're still not at a favorable outcome. We're still in the messy, messy middle. But you know, there's always a lot of magic in the middle. Um, so that's kind of like what we've been dealing with. But anyway, her th- that her, that story, the 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 experience that I've been that I've been having with my sister has has given me a lot of context and it's the theme that I'm choosing for this month is based on that experience. And the theme is, drum roll please, (laughs) the theme is uh, interrupt. Interrupt. I want July to be the the month of interruption. Um, And let me explain a little bit more what I mean by that. The other day, my sister was in the hospital. The It was the day before her birthday. It was the 22nd of June. She was surrounded by our, her family. So I was there. My brother was there. My mother was there. My niece was there. And she had been going through some massive, massive loads of pain. And all of a sudden, as I'm standing in front of her, I look over and my the door of the hospital room faces the elevator on her floor. So I'm looking over and I see the elevator doors open and I see a man with three boys walking in holding a bouquet of roses. And my mouth drops because that man is my husband. Now my husband did not tell me that he was going to drive two and a half hours in the rain to come wish my sister a happy birthday. He was had been home with the kids. I had gone to the hospital and I had gone by myself for a reason. I wanted to sleep in the hospital with her. I wanted to take care of her. And I didn't, um, and you know, I wasn't, I thought going alone was probably the best alternative. So I, I left my husband with the boys so that he could take care of them and I could take care of her. So I didn't know that my husband had gotten together with the boys and that they had said, let's drive up there and let's go surprise Nina and give her love and um, wish her a happy birthday and buy her flowers. So when I saw him, him walk through that elevator door, like those elevator doors, my mouth dropped and my sister goes, what, what happened? And I'm like, I can't, and he shook his head, no, like, you know, be quiet, don't say anything. So I kind of didn't say anything. And I'm like, oh, no, no, nothing. And I kind of played it off. And then my sister's like, oh, my pain, my pain. You know, she's in excruciating pain. And then then he, like, comes through the door. And she turns her face and she sees him. And she sees one by one each child walk in, each one of her nephews, whom she loves so, so much. And it was a total complete surprise. She had no idea it was coming. And you guys, for a minute and a half, she had such a spark of bliss that she felt no pain. Nothing. Nada. It was like the joy and the excitement and the adrenaline interrupted the pain. It interrupted it and it allowed her to fully enjoy that moment and experience a blissful, 
pain-free minute. Now, after the hugs and the kisses and the tears and the joy kind of settled down and the adrenaline wore off, the pain returned. But the, but the importance of the moment has stayed with me. It is important to interrupt things. It is such an important part of life. You know, if you're in a screaming match, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, like you're in a screaming match with your kid or with your spouse or something like that, and you guys are so angry, and then something happens that provokes humor, and all of a sudden one of you starts laughing, and then the other one starts laughing, and you interrupt the screaming match, things settle down, and they're not as dramatic as they were before. If you've ever seen a toddler that's having a fit because the toddler wants, I don't know, you know, the, the toy, and you interrupt that toddler's thought pattern immediately by distracting them with something else, the toddler forgets about the toy and then is able to refocus and kind of settle down. Interruption is such an important thing. And sometimes we are fixated. We're fixated on our pain. We're fixated on our problems. We're fixated on ourselves, you know, on ourself, you know, on, on the, the issues that we're facing on ourselves and interrupting the, the pattern allows us to take a step away from what we are focused on and shift perspective and change the circumstances. And it could be a very powerful thing. So this month, I want to focus on interruption, um, just incorporating things into our lives that change it up. If you are a runner, interrupt the pattern and go do a strength class. If you go to the gym every day, interrupt the pattern and go for a massage instead of a workout. If you are, you know, always um, eating a certain food, like you eat the same thing every single day, interrupt the pattern and try something new. Interrupt patterns, interrupt routines, interrupt emotions, because that interruption creates shifts and it gives the the brain and the the heart and the soul an opportunity to change perspective to shift to 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 create um i don't I, I don't even know how to say it like just a a shift in momentum is what i can say july is a great month i think for interruptions because we're in the summer months and often um, this is a great month for vacations. So a vacation is an interruption of your daily routine. So if you are going on vacation this month, I want you to think about how are you going to um, be disruptive in your vacation? Maybe this is going to be the vacation that you exercise during vacation, or maybe this is going to be the vacation that you uh, try an adventure that you've never tried before. Um, uh, this will be the vacation that you set an intention before you go on the vacation, and that'll be uh, an, um, an interruption. Um, it's, it's, I want you to start thinking about tricking the brain, tricking the body, tricking um the routines um uh, and that's like a, a you know i i have this program called rejuva fast and and dr sanchez always my partner and in, in rejuva fast is dr sanchez and he always talks about being like a stealthy and a ninja in your health uh, and i think we have to be stealthy and ninjas in our lives right and interruption is a great way to do it so if you've just been in a rut um, and you need an interruption, this is going to be the month that you think about that. And it could be exciting and it could be fun and it could be a challenge for you to, to think of life in that way. And it's also an opportunity for you to go with the flow when there are things that surprise you that are outside of your expectations. So oftentimes 
we have a plan. And when we have that plan and that plan is interrupted, we think that that is a bad thing. We are upset by that. We, there's a lot of drama around that. You know, we want everything to go as, as we expected, as we planned. And this is an opportunity for you to start looking at interruptions in a positive way more than a negative way. So if you have a plan and that plan is interrupted by something that is unexpected, one thing you can think about is what is this teaching me? What lesson am I learning? How is this becoming a story for my future? How is this going to be funny one day? How is this serving me or my family? What what am I here to to learn why why is the universe offering me this interruption um i read this in a in actually speaking of james clear again he the the author of atomic habits which i'll put in the show notes for you but uh he sent an email um a week i think a monthly email or weekly email something like that um uh, with with the quotes and one of the quotes that he sent this week was you never know what worse luck your bad luck has saved you from. And I thought about those uh, interruptions to our lives that sometimes we think is bad luck, but really might be saving us from worse luck, right? It might be an interruption that seems bad, but is actually in our favor. So that's a great way to to deal with the the unexpected things that come our way um, when we are intentional about it. Uh, and you know, rituals matter, routines matter. It's it's a it's a great thing to have consistency and routine and all that kind of stuff. I'm not I'm not suggesting that that's not good, uh, but I also suggest that you embrace interruptions uh, from time to time throughout your life. And this could be something that you take with you and kind of add it as a tool in your toolbox. Of every once in a while, it is good to interrupt. Um, your life so for the better for the better I, I I don't suggest that you interrupt it with self-sabotage <laughs> I suggest that you interrupt it with things that will serve you that are good for your soul for your brain for your mind for your relationships for for all the for all the things um, one of the things I'm doing this month July 14th to the 19th is I am interrupting my you know, regular eating routine by participating in the Rejua Fast Challenge. I'm going to spend five days uh, mimic fasting so that my body um, engages in that kind of disruptive behavior. I'm going to interrupt my my um, regular eating. I'm going to interrupt my exercise, and I'm going to. I'm going to do something different for those five days. I'm going to reduce my caloric intake. I'm going to set some intentions. I'm going to use that time for a lot of prayer, a lot of reflection, um, and just in interrupting, interrupting the flow, which, which I think is going to serve, serve me well. So if you want to join me in that, um, make sure you go to the show notes or just simple go to rejuvafast.com and sign up and let's do it in community that's the best part of the whole thing is is that we do it amongst a, a beautiful community and we all get to spend five days together hand in hand doing this thing um which is also an interruption right because you get to be exposed to new people you get to be exposed to new ideas you get to be exposed to new recipes to a new way of life to to new ways of looking at at health and wellness it's just, it's amazing. So I, I invite you to do that with me too. So for today on this sacred Sunday, my invitation for you is that you reflect on this month. How has this month been, how's this month of June served you? How did your theme go for you? Uh, my theme was refreshing, uh, uh, refresh. And to be honest with you, when I, when this thing happened with my sister, it hasn't felt refreshing to be in a hospital or to be dealing with the things that, that, you know, with the pain that my sister has been going through. 
But there have been refreshing parts of it, which was, it was refreshing for me to be able to be there for her. It was refreshing for me to see my husband and my kids walk through that door with a bouquet of roses to surprise her. It was refreshing to have all of our family gathered around her on her birthday to, to, to be there for her, to support her. Um, my brother now, you know, doesn't live in Miami. My sister doesn't live in Miami. So we are far away from each other. And it was refreshing for us all to be together, even though we were in the hospital. So when I look back at June and I had that, that theme of refresh, um, didn't have as many watermelon salads as I expected, uh, but I found refreshing things in other ways. Uh, and that's what living with a theme is is all about. So now we're now I invite you to think about what June was for you and how did you show up? How did the theme serve you? Uh, did the theme serve you? How are you moving along with your goals, with your dreams, with your desires? Um, and then how do you want to step into this month? What do, what do you want it to mean? What are the intentions you're going to set? Um, how do you want to show up? And uh, and th- that process, that experience is, is incredibly powerful to keep you grounded, to keep you mindful, and to keep you in alignment with, your, with the life that you're trying to create, with, with your, the best version of your life. Um, so for me, it's interruption. I don't know what it's going to be for you, but I invite you to consider it. And I, you know, encourage you to join me in the... In, in interrupt if that's something that that resonates with you and speaks to your heart then you know by all means join me in my theme and uh, let's do it together um, and of course rejuva fast is a great way to do it uh, life coaching one-on-one with me is also a great way to do it uh, and send me an, uh, a message and let me know if you're listening to this if this serves you in any way uh, if you resonate with this message um, and just Anything you want to share with me, that's, uh, that's the beauty of this uh, platform is that it keeps us connected. So I'm, I'm really grateful to be able to have this every week to show up and to, to spend a little time with you every Sunday. So happy Sacred Sunday. I hope you have a beautiful end of June and an even more beautiful beginning of July. And I can't wait to see what this month will hold for us. Bye, everybody. That's it for today's episode. Thanks so much for being here. I am deeply, deeply grateful for this time to connect. Now, if you are feeling called to dig deeper and really work on elevating your mindset, your wellness, and your relationships, and you're looking for a life coach to work with you one-on-one and really help you just retrain your brain, define success on your own terms, and just live healthier, happier, and more meaningful life, Well, I invite you to schedule a consult with me. Let's have a conversation and see if working together is in our future. You can find the link to calendar of consult right there in my show notes, but you can also connect with me on my website, carolinedeposada.com or send me a DM on Instagram at carolinedeposada. I'm so excited to connect with you a little further. Now, as far as this podcast goes, I would so, so, so appreciate if you could leave a review wherever you listen to podcasts. Those reviews help us so much. And like my friend always says, the project is big and you're a part of it. So thank you for helping me spread good in this world.